Hey guys, today I just want to make a quick video on beneficial isopods for your vivariums or terrariums or any other kind of bioactive setups. Um, so today we are talking about these. These are them. These are the isopods. Um, and here I have the, I, I think they're called like giant orange isopods or, um, yeah, I think that's what they're called. But you can see one there, or well, a couple there. Uh, let's see if we can find any more. They're kind of secretive little things. There's one on top of the wood there. Um, but yeah, so these are isopods and a lot of people know them as like roly polies or pill bugs or they're all the same. They're just different common names. Um, but what they are is basically a lot of people think that they're like an insect, um, but in reality they're a crustacean. And these things are cousins to the big isopods or I think they're called I'm not sure they're they're called something else um, in the ocean but they get huge in the ocean and these guys are basically their cousins and um, you might be asking why does someone want to keep these these uh, little crustaceans or isopods they keep your clean your tanks clean by breaking down organic matter. Um, that could be fish poop, <laughs> not fish poop, you don't want to put these in aquariums, but this could be um, reptile poop, this could be decaying leaves, it could be um, a lot of other things, you know, uneaten food for certain types of reptiles, but these little guys are great for that. Um, but there's a few key things that you need to know about these guys. Um, so first off, these guys really like um, moisture. Um, again, I said that they're crustaceans, and right there you can see I have a couple of different species in here. I think that's like a powder gray, or uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't know exactly their their common names. I just know that they're there's two different types of isopods in here. But um, yeah, as I was saying, that they are crustaceans, um, so they do need water. So just like crabs that you find at the ocean, or um, even, you know, hermit crabs even need some kind of, uh, you know, moisture. And so crustaceans have gills, or most of the time they have gills. I'm not too uh, well versed in my crustacean anatomy, but um, yeah, these guys have gills. And so they need a very um, moist or, um, you know, wet environment or pockets of moisture where they can go and uh, rehydrate their gills or... Um, Again, I'm not, I'm not sure if that's the technical term, but that's basically what they are. Um, so these guys need moisture. So if you're gonna put them in like your snake habitat or your bearded dragon or whatever, um, just be sure to have some pockets of moisture like some sphagnum moss or um, you know, any other place where they have lots of like, you know, moisture and cover. Um, but yeah, so they really need that, and again, like I said, they benefit from, um, or they eat like decaying matter, uh, plant matter, whether that be poop, um, <laughs> you know, anything, you know, of that nature. And so you can see in here, I have a couple of pieces of cork bark, and those are just little leftover pieces that have broken off from my snake's cages, and um, I just threw that in there. And sometimes, like if we can see, let me see if I can lift this up. Sometimes, as you can see, they love hiding underneath it. Um, they uh, they just love it. And so I also have some of these uh, Indian catapa leaves, which if you're familiar with um, aquariums and fish keeping, that these guys are kind of used in um, fish tanks. Um, so these guys, these are great for them as well because Isopods really like leaf litter and um, they kind of it kind of decays over time and they can use it to hide under they can also eat it um, and It's just you know, they that's what they're usually found in the wild like and as a kid I remember me and my brother would be in the backyard and we you know be turning over logs and stuff And we'd see these little guys and that's kind of the environment that you want to create um, Now I'll show you really quick in my Sorry this my pet room is kind of a mess right now, but this is my adult corn snakes uh, enclosure. You can see them here. Um, so I have some live plants in here, and back there there's some spider plant, and you can see all the old leaves. <coughs> Sorry. Um, there's lots of wood in here. 
Um, and so this is the water dish, it needs to be cleaned, but underneath sometimes I'll put um, some sphagnum moss in there. That way when I fill up the water bowl, any kind of excess water can drip right under there and create like that moist uh, hiding place that the isopods need. And so all of my um, kind of bioactive or, or planted terrarium slash vivariums, uh, this is again a desert, um, I guess, uh, habitat for some of my king snakes. But even then, uh, as a desert enclosure, I have really dry substrate, but there's pockets of moisture all throughout this terrarium for those isopods to hide out. And what they do is they hide out in there and then at nighttime they come out and they look for any kind of decaying plant matter, you know, whether that be old leaves, old succulent leaves, you know, pieces of wood, snake poop, you know, all that good stuff. Um, same in this little uh, bioactive terrarium here. And same down here, you can actually see my king snake is out. Sorry, that glass is really dirty. But uh, yeah, so again, same thing. It's This can work for um, desert, you know, kind of, setups um again this this california king snake is native to the desert so it's i've tried to recreate a desert habitat for it but again there's pockets of moisture where the plants are there there's some moisture here by the wood underneath the rocks all and those isopods will hide out there during the day and i've seen them come out around dusk or otherwise but yeah so again keep moisture the whole habitat doesn't need to be you know, sopping wet or anything like that, but it is important to have pockets of moisture for them to go and hide out and uh, rehydrate their gills. Um, yeah, and so they eat, they decaying plant matter, they'll eat snake poop, but sometimes I like to, uh, you know, subsidize them with, um, you know, fish food. These are just really, really old cichlid pellets that my dad has uh, left over from his big fish. And uh, also these like expired algae wafers that I put in there sometimes. And you can kind of see one right there, kind of in the center of the screen there. And they will just kind of dog pile over these when you first put them in there, because they're so smelly that it brings them all out and they all kind of just, you know, cover the whole thing. And uh, any kind of, um, you know, veggie, um, carrot, potato, all these like kind of harder vegetables uh, will do really well. Um, it kind of lets them munch on it for a while and kind of get, um, you know, it kind of, it, do, it does not, it's not going to decay really quickly. Um, but that's what I feed mine. And uh, what I'll do is sometimes, you know, I'll take some water um, and just, because I have a lid on it, I don't need to do this very often, but sometimes I'll just go in and dump a little bit of water in there. Um, again, just to keep everything's hydrated. Um, now, if you don't have a lid or if this is in your terrarium, you wanna make sure that you water quite frequently. Again, to try and keep those pockets of moisture for them to use. Um, also, there's, I don't know if you can see there, but there's eggshell and um, uh, color bone, you know, from birds and uh, parrots and all that. It's right there on the, kind of over here. But they, um, they use that as a source of calcium. Again, these are crustaceans, they have a hard exoskeleton and they need that uh, calciums and the different uh, minerals that are in, you know, eggshell and cuddle bone that helps them create a hard exoskeleton and helps them shed properly. So you wanna put a couple of pieces in there and I've seen them eat that too, like they'll kind of dog pile on top of that. And um, yeah, you always wanna make sure you have a piece of that in there. It just promotes good health for them. Um, but yeah, and a lot of people, you know, use these in poison dart frogs, they use them for, you know, crested gecko or any other type of tropical setup, but a lot of people don't realize that they could be useful in aquariums too. Um, you know, these are old aquarium plant trimmings that I've trimmed and, uh, what's nice is you can just throw them in here and they'll eat it. Um, it might take them a while but, uh, they'll eat it and it's a good way to kind of vary their diet as long as the plants aren't you know, poisonous or anything like that to them. Um, but it's a good way to just kind of get rid of uh, plant trimmings the green way, quote unquote, and uh, you know, just utilize them uh, in all aspects of the pet keeping hobby. 
Um, but yeah, so what I'll do is uh, when I'm adding these guys, I'll just take that piece of wood like you saw me shake a few of them into the terrarium or vivarium and just let them do their thing. They'll reproduce over time and in no time you'll have a little colony that will again come out at night and kind of help break down poop and um, old plant leaves that have died off, you know, all that good stuff. Um, now it doesn't replace you know, cleaning up after your terrarium or vivarium, but um, it does help, you know, maybe stretch that time out um, and really make it so that you're not having to do a ton of maintenance all the time on your terrarium. But yeah, so I utilize that. Um, I'll still spot clean here and there, um, but you know, for those big, you know, like my big corn snake, you know, that, you know, when it poops, it poops a lot. So I'll still go in and remove, try to remove most of it, um, but it just helps, you know, from having to lift up those big glass terrariums, like, every month or so when I used to do it, and just helps stretch that out a little bit more and, um, make it so you don't have to lift a, a heavy terrarium to go change it. But, yeah, um, that's pretty much it on these guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments, and, uh, again, these are the giant orange isopods, and uh, I think they're called powder gray or some kind of uh, <laughs> other isopod that's in here. But there's multiple different colors and uh, shapes, and you can get even like the pill bugs from outside. You know, just be careful and kind of let them reproduce a couple of generations. That way, you're not introducing anything from outside. But I've gotten some pill bugs or roly polies from outside. And just put them in a container like this and let them reproduce reproduce and then I've added those into my colony so you don't have to buy some if you can find some outside but again let them reproduce so that way if they had anything like as far as like pathogens like parasites or anything um, let them reproduce so that way the new generations there and hopefully healthier uh, but yeah that's basically the uh, you know, break down on these guys. If you guys, again, have any questions, um, let me know. Um, you know, again, they just need some water, some substrate, you know, whether that be paper towel or this is um, old, what's it called? Um, Eco Earth. And they like, again, moisture, substrate, and a hiding spot, whether that be wood, you know, leaves, and um, really that's it and then any other food that you want to add is all supplemental because they can pretty much eat anything that's kind of decaying or anything that's plant related so yeah um, let me know if you guys have any questions um, again I have been getting into aquariums lately so if you guys want to see any kind of aquarium videos or aquatic videos let me know um, this channel has been primarily about reptiles and other invertebrates, um, but you know, I want to, you know, offer that to you guys if you guys are interested. But uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe, and you know, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and give me a like or a dislike if you thought this uh, video was helpful. And until next time.